On this episode of Josh's Car Corner, I'm in Indianapolis for the 2022 Holding Cookout. It's a crewman! Well, it had to rain all morning, so everything is nice and damp, but it didn't dampen anybody's spirits. And the sixth annual Holden Cookout is finally kicking off, and what an event. I have never seen so many Holden cars in one place, and just so many cars I've actually wanted to see up close. And we're gonna look at some of those cars later, uh, but a little background on this is it's hosted by Travis Bell, and this is the sixth year that he has done it. It's actually on his property, this is his. What happened is it used to be a greenhouse, went out of business, bought the land, cleared it out, and decided to start hosting this. And it's great, they raise money for charity. They're actually gonna be giving away a refurbished base G8 today, raffles for other kinds of prizes, and they raise a ton of money, pay for the event, and then whatever's left over, give it away to charity, which I think is a great thing. Uh, it's a day-long event, there's all kinds of things going on. There's a burnout pit, and we got some barbecue, we got some other food vendors. Uh, it's gonna be a good day, so we'll walk around, look at some cars, I've already got a ton of great information from some people from Australia who are here. Uh, so let's check some cars out. So my buddy Joe, of course, worked it out. So there would be a GXP Corral and he had 27 cars registered. And I'm not sure how many are here now, but I'm guessing at least 20. Uh, and there's some pretty uh, cool modified ones here. That one's got a crazy bubble hood. There's a really crazy one over here that's it's totally set up for maximum aero. He's turning it into a track car and what a lot of people are noticing about it is that it's got a uh, Kenny Bell blower on it and apparently that's a very rare thing to see on an LS motor I've never seen one before it does have a sandwich intercooler but it's massive and look at the overdrive pulley to run the thing it is huge a big eight rib belt he says it makes 900 I'm not gonna argue with him and even a good buddy of ours, Wayne Kennedy, came down from go Toronto with his. Which, by the way, he is actually trying to sell right now. So if you are interested in a G8 GXP, this is going to be uh, on the block. And here's what's really cool. Not a lot of people even are aware that this was a color. But this, there's three of these cards here. This color is known as Stealth Blue. It is the rarest of the G8 colors, and we have three of them here. Uh, two are base models, I think, and one is a GT that is set up for drag racing. So a stealth GT has got to probably be the rarest of the G8s. And of course, if you're going to have a GXP Corral, you also have to have a Ute Corral. So here's the crewman that you saw in the intro. Got a lot of good information about this thing. Now, when I first saw pictures of this on the internet, I assumed it had been imported and was still right-hand drive just as it left Australia. But no, this one actually has been converted. A donor GTO from 2004 was used. So it's got the GTO seats, dash, shifter, and everything. So it's LS1, 4L60. Uh, but the amazing thing is it works. And it is for sale. If you, know, if you really want a crewman bad enough and don't want to wait for me to finish mine, you can buy this one. Here's a VE, and I'm gonna guess a lot of these are left-hand drive, and I'm also going to guess that a lot of these were done by Randy Reese at Left Hand Utes, which, by the way, if you haven't seen it yet, I think it's episode 25 of Josh's Car Corner where I actually visited Randy's shop and saw how he actually builds a lot of these amazing cars. Now this one is actually still right-hand drive. So I'm gonna have to talk to the owner of this later and ask him how the heck he managed to keep a right-hand drive one. Oh god, this one is a hot full-out Malou with the LSA. This is trick. I, I know Randy built this one. In fact, I remember seeing this one for sale on his site. God, Randy does good work. And it's so cool to see one of these over on this side of the planet. I saw somebody wearing a t-shirt with this on it earlier, and I didn't understand it, and I'm still trying to figure it out, but for those of you don't, that don't know, one of the most popular brands in China is Buick. And that's one of the reasons that GM even kept Buick around is because they sold so well in China. But this clearly was a Caprice cop car. And uh, it says Park Avenue. 
Now, I mean, this suggests to me that they actually sold Commodores in China as Buick Park Avenues, which if true would be insane. I'm gonna have to do some research on this. Um, Chinese cars are left-hand drive, so that would be correct. Oh, look at the wood grain. Now this one, I have seen on, on the internet before now. For the longest time, I looked at the shape of the GTO and I thought, boy, that looks a lot shape-wise identical to the 98 to 02 Monte Carlo that they raced in NASCAR. And I always thought, wouldn't it be cool to put the Dale Earnhardt colors on a GTO and kind of recreate that car? Well, this guy has done it. And then just for fun, he snuck a nasty turbo out the hood with a massive exhaust and dump pipe. So yeah, this thing's pretty wicked, but somehow it does kind of look right in black with the good wrench and number three in the logo pack. It does kind of look like that old Monte Carlo stock car, which, hey, to each their own, I think this is cool. Now this looks completely out of place because it's a Ford, but it is a Falcon Ute. And uh, that's pretty rare to see on the streets. Yeah. Now, this one's here because it's a 97. Therefore, it meets the 25 year import rule and can be imported as is. So that's why this one is here. It's really cool to see though. I've never seen a Falcon on the streets in the US before. There's one down here that's done up in a Lightning McQueen motif, which to be honest, I wouldn't have thought of, but you know what? It kind of works. Oh, that's funny. Now, there are all kinds of ways to have fun with a GTO. This is just a different one. I approve. Now, some people, like my buddy Gary, brought their own set of tires to chew up in the burnout pit. And of course, while I was busy talking to other people, he destroyed them already. If there's one person I know that knows how to do a proper burnout, it is Gary Fowler. I have got some great videos from him at Pontiac Adventures lunching tires. He goes all out. Some people don't realize the Caprice PBV cop car is a Holden, but it in fact is. As a matter of fact, it's the same platform as the G8, the Zeta platform. It's just 10 inches longer right here. So they sell this in Australia as a Caprice, also as a Statesman, and there are luxury versions of it. And there was even an HSV version of this long wheelbase called the Grange, uh, which I always thought was pretty cool. That would be like a really high performance cruiser. That'd be a fun car to have. But this is the Caprice PBV and L77, which is a little different to the L76 in that it has an oil cooler added for police duty, and it's got these heavy duty steel wheels, obviously, and most of them have a really basic interior or no interior at all. Now, detective versions had a proper interior, but this one also has the column shifter, which means it's after 2016, I think. Earlier ones were all center shifter which the cops didn't like because it didn't leave them room to pop, mount laptops and stuff. So then later on they came along and brought in the column shifter, which I think is weird for them because I bet Holden hadn't done a column shifter in donkey's years. This, as the owner just told me, is a wide body kit from a company in California called Ballyon Motorsports. Now, this is what the three piece HSV spoiler looks like. But I can tell by looking at it, this is the RK version. Um, you actually can't get the HSV version anymore. There is a company in Australia that recreates them. I don't know how accurate they are. Uh, I always thought that was the best looking spoiler though for the GTO because it sits so much lower than the factory one. It sits back. It doesn't actually do anything because there's no opening underneath for the air to go through, but it is the best looking, at least in my opinion. Okay. Five points if you know what that's from. <laughs> that's hilarious. And I am very glad to see one of these here. Of all of the Holdens, I am the biggest fan of the wagons. And I can tell this by looking at this one. It is a Randy Reese special. So Left Hand Utes built this one. It's either VE Series 3 or VF based on the front end. Uh, but I love the wagons. I still remember at Randy's shop when he had that Club Sport the day I was there and how much I back then I wished I had the money to buy that one from him and have him do it up because I love wagons. Wagons are the coolest version. Now this car is pretty cool because this one is going to be raffled off today. 
This is something Travis has started doing every year. He finds a G8, so this is a base model, and they restored the paint, fixed a bunch of things on the inside, put Camaro 20s on it, and they're gonna raffle this thing off today. So you can buy a ticket for $50, and you can buy as many tickets as you want, and you could go home with a pretty slick G8. Base model alone, it would make a great daily driver. All right, so I'm here with Travis Bell. This is his property. This is These are his buildings. That is his burnout pit, and this is his event. Um, so the first question I want to ask you is, where did your um, involvement with Holden start in Our life? Our Australian cars. Now, for those of you who have no idea what a Holden is, when my wife was pregnant, she wanted a four-door car, and she picked out this orange Australian G8. And I was, like, super cool. I had tons of friends in Australia. I used to, I've been from... Sydney to Perth and back on a road train and just really understood what these cars were. Uh, her first car was the Ignition Orange G8. She was the one that started all this madness. And then from there we imported the Ute and then it just kind of spiraled out of control when she bought a 17 SS, I bought a 16 SS, now we have a GXP, but it was just a cookout and we just wanted to get some people. It started with, it was either 29 or 32 cars that first year. So uh, now, I mean, what do you think? I mean, yeah, we had over 300 cars here today. Yeah. So the inspiration to, because it, because it's a lot of involved going on here. I mean, sure. you've got security, you've got yep. parking guys, you've yep. got all this stuff going on, food caters. I mean, that takes that's a lot of involvement, and I know guys that are willing to put that kind of work in to make something like this happen. Sure. So what is that? Is that what drives you to do something like this? I always there's something going on upstairs, and I mean, it may not be healthy, but you know, my wife hasn't kicked me out yet. I always tell people, because I've got ideas that fly around all the time, the little Monopoly houses. So if you buy a house on Monopoly, it's got a door and three windows. One, two, three. I have ideas that fly around all the time, and only one window is shut. And it hits this, and I go, okay, let's work on this. Let's go this. I mean, of course, at a car show, you're like, what are the kids going to do? Because they're just sitting there going, this sucks. I own that bounce house. Like, we bought a bounce house, and that thing was popular as hell today. So, and we put it in there, and the kids are... are you know contained to the fence the parents are having a good time so yes we have to hire and think but we have a lot of good friends and a very understanding wife yeah. so, so from year one to today how has this thing evolved to evolved so we did so this would have technically be the seventh year but we had you know no covid problems but we could we, the city wouldn't allow us to do it which is fine the third year everybody would leave my house like john force and i had a little bit more respect for my neighbors because i was like damn, you don't want to live next to this guy that has all these maniacs that live there. So when we started building and improving the property, this was all overgrown greenhouses back in the day. We put it in an 82 foot long, 15 foot long burnout pad because that will get it out of their system while they're here. Clap, clap, clap. They're not all up by the road taking pictures. So we got that under control. But then as it got bigger, some of our friends that know how to cook because I can burn you something if you'd like me to. But <laughs> then it was so that, and then as the new building evolved and it just kind of spread out the property, and we always try to have the best restrooms that you've ever been in. Yeah, Road so, America, I think, had the same trailer. So yeah, that was. It's that, a wedding tent or wedding, uh, wedding one. So, like, if you have an outdoor wedding, you got three stalls and it's yeah. ace. But super nice. We always try to go as big as we can. So, after today, I'm sure you've already got ideas in your head about how to do next year different, yeah. better, um, shinier. I really didn't. Th I knew we were, so that was all supposed to be truck and trailer. They're over there and we knew it, but I didn't know that we would get into the overflow as bad. And we painted the, and we striped every stripe and made sure that it all, because like a lot of the drone shots at car shows, I mean, they look like they're all over the place. So we did a little stripe on the yard, grid of the yard. It looked super awesome. So yeah, we have some ideas and some things to do, but it'll be, uh, it'll be super rad. So for somebody that wants to come next year, where should they be looking for information? So we, we will end up having uh, just a, a Midwest Holden and, uh, you know, I don't know that we can get much bigger, but, uh, you know, we always try to pick a date. It's usually Labor Day because people have a three-day weekend and uh, they don't have to go to work on Monday if their parents or bosses like that. Well, you've got a new regular in me. Because really? this is freaking awesome. I appreciate Absolutely. it. I hope you come back. I will. I definitely will. All right. Thank well, you so much. Travis, anything else for... we need to know? I don't think so. We'll see you next time. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks so much, man. So Tim won the car last year. He's still driving it. It's up in the up in the hill, basically. How is it? Great. So make some noise for him. He's going to draw the next one. So we're just going to go with this. Ticket number zero eight seven three three zero five zero eight seven three three zero five. Fuck you! Fuck you! You fucking.
fucking joking. Oh my fucking god. Get the fuck out of my way. <laughs> Say it, tell everybody what your name is. <laughs> it looks like d -shop. Dylan, where are you from? You want a car. Congratulations, sir. How the fuck are you going to get home and drive that motherfucker? How old are you? How long, how, did you ride with somebody here? Yes, sir, my car didn't make it this year, so uh, I got a 2005 GTO. Sorry, I need to talk towards the crowd. Hi. Um, <laughs> um, I got a 2005 Pontiac GTO. Um, the, it was supposed to go on a trailer. Last week, the trailer got rear-ended, um, so the car was not able to make it. So thank you, Sean, for giving me a ride up here. Great friend. Um, and thank you to the people who got me into cars, Billy. Breezy, Dennis, uh, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> $35 from my amazing wife. Well. Or do you take Mr. Bryce and I may have no fucking idea with Mr. Bryce? <laughs> Mr. Bryce! What should he do? What should he do? Oh, 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 yeah, What's your name again? <laughs> this is from Michigan. Do you have someone else to drive that car? Because there's a white Pontiac G8 up. There's a white Pontiac G8 up there with keys in it, and it's fucking yours. <laughs> cars and didn't tell a motherfucker that we did. <laughs> and you just won a car. Make some noise! Oh, that's a that's a well, the day has come to an end and it has been an epic, awesome day. The rain never really came back and we got to enjoy some beautiful weather. It's just been awesome. I learned a lot from a lot of different people. Um, that's going to help me with future projects and met some cool people that hopefully I'll see again in the near future. It's been awesome and uh, cannot thank Travis Bell enough for uh, sitting down and talking with me there for a little bit and uh, for hosting this amazing event. I've never seen anything like it. It's really cool and I will definitely be back. The next episode is going to be something pretty cool. Uh, it should be coming out not too long after this one comes out. Uh, not giving away anything on that one. I'm going to leave it up to... Uh, your imagination. But until then, thanks for watching Josh's Car Corner. See you soon.